Here's a guy who thinks that pi proves that a higher power exists. This is why I don't like the term atheism, because in atheism, the question of whether there is a higher power is left unanswered. And I get the impression that most people who call themselves atheists subscribe to the notion that there isn't a higher power, that there's just this, that somehow we're going to understand the entire universe in terms of what we can detect about it in terms of what's reachable by human intelligence, and there's only this, nothing more. I don't know how many atheists are convinced that we're going to eventually know and understand everything in terms of what we can detect. Maybe there are things we can't understand. That's not the same as saying that there is a higher power of any kind. And we see that view uh, extrapolated in theories like, uh, you know, the multiverse, and it's like, uh, you know, we have to answer the problem of, of why everything is so ordered in this universe. Why is that a problem? Why must we assume that the default state of reality is chaos? Why must order be contingent? If we have to account for the order in the universe, why don't we have to account for the order inherent to a higher power? If the higher power can just be non-contingently ordered, why can't the universe? So we get around it by inventing many, many universes that all exploded outwards into separate dimensions, if you like, at the Big Bang. They all had different laws of physics. It was all very random. And the vast majority of them were dysfunctional and ended very soon after their creation. And the one that we're in happens to be the one where the conditions were just right to support things like solar systems and, and life. That's one possibility. Another is that the parameters of this universe simply aren't free to vary. We can imagine universes with other constants and laws, but the fact that we can imagine them doesn't mean that they can actually exist. It's the old, you know, it's like the, the face in the teacup or the face in the tea leaves. You know, you see patterns that aren't really there or it's the, it's like a very sophisticated expression of that uh, old argument that you sometimes hear in, in theism, in monotheism, that if you, <laughs> if you get enough monkeys with enough typewriters and enough time, like an infinite duration of time, sooner or later one of those monkeys turns out the complete works of Shakespeare by sheer chance. It feels like that kind of an argument if you just give yourself enough universes, one of them will work. I don't buy it. I don't. I think it's coming from the wrong place. It's coming from an aversion to any kind of acceptance that there's a higher power. Even if that's what motivated that inference, that doesn't mean that it isn't the sensible one. Given that it's not clear what a higher power even is, it seems more sensible to me. But we actually don't need to feel that aversion because there is proof that there is a higher power. And that proof comes from mathematics, right? And the best example of this, I think, is the number pi, 3.14, etc., 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 also expressed as 22 over 7. I suppose that approximates pi, but pi is an irrational number, which by definition can't be expressed as such a simple fraction. But whether you express it as a fraction or a decimal, uh, in both cases it's an approximation of the true value of pi. Pi is the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter. And it can't be bound. It can't actually be given a value. It can, in fact. It's merely that the value can't be expressed in a finite amount of time. It just goes on and on and on. And I think at this point, several trillion values have been uncovered of the actual decimal value of pi, se several trillion decimal places it's been worked out to. Not a single one of those decimals is random, and yet you can't pick out a repeating pattern in it either. It's not like 3.333333, you know, and you know, it's always going to be three, it's about, you know, a third, or 0 0.33333, it's a third of one. Pi just keeps on going, and you can keep on going forever. It's what's called a transcendental number. And there's a word you don't hear often talked about in, in physics, the idea of something being transcendent. 
and yet in mathematics we call pi a transcendental number, with good reason, because you can't get to it here within space-time. If you can't get to it within space-time, then you can't get to it at all. It's not as though there is some other reality in which pi has a last digit. <laughs> That's a really amazing thing if you think about it. There's something real, you know it's there, and you can't get at it. You see? Am I going too far in saying that this is proof of a higher power? No. Yes. In what sense is an infinite string of numbers higher than observable reality? And what does it have to do with any kind of power? Now someone argued against me in the past on this matter and they said that there's no such thing as a perfect circle in nature. Therefore, there's no such thing as the actual value of pi, right? But that's kind of getting the cart before the horse because it's like saying first came the cube and then came the geometry that makes up the cube. That's exactly how it went down. Geometry was invented to describe shapes we see in nature, but is far less complex and messy than what we see in nature. It's not as though geometric shapes and the math used to explain them existed before someone thought them up. They are models of what we experience. They have no existence independent of the modeling process. We look at the world through mathematical glasses, so to speak. That's why we see things mathematically. To infer that math is therefore inherent to the universe is like putting on rose-colored glasses, seeing everything as rose-colored, then inferring that this color is inherent to the universe. You see, it's the other way around. First there's the geometry of the cube, and it's those mathematical laws that are holding the cube in the shape that the cube is, in the same way that it's mathematical laws like the number pi that makes up the circle. Nothing that's cube-shaped is held in the shape of a cube by mathematical laws. Any matter that holds a cube shape is held in that shape by physical forces, not math. In other words, every imperfect circle that you find in nature is utterly dependent on the fact that the number pi is a reality. Pi is part of the concept of a circle. Saying that circles depend on pi to be circles is a meaningless tautology. It's no more meaningful than saying that circles depend on being circles in order to be circles. This guy is effectively saying nothing. I mean, this, this fills me with a real sense of the profound, but I feel that it's very hard to get people to, to realize just how big a deal this is. There is something here. It's real. You can get the edge of it, but you can't get the whole thing. But you know the whole thing is there, out of reach. It's so out of reach that if you gave yourself an infinite duration of time, you could not get to the end of it. Therefore, there is something that transcends the whole notion of time as... Oh, I'm losing my words. The whole notion of time is something that can be bound. Who thinks time can be bound? I don't think there are many people at all who have any problem with seeing time as stretching infinitely into the future. There's no logical or physical reason why that can't be the case. If time is infinite, then in principle every digit of pi could be expressed without needing to transcend time. There must be the unbound, whatever that is. There's an aspect of reality that we might call the unbound. The infinite, it's absolutely real. But what do you mean when you say that it's higher in any sense? Higher than what? Higher than physical reality? If time stretches infinitely into the future, then physical reality is unbound. See, people think that the notion of infinite regress is a problem. That's usually applied to creation. So you start with something and then you ask, where did that come from? So you jump to something else, typically to God but you just jump to something else and then you have to ask, well, where did that come from? And you jump to something else. Where did that come from? And you jump to something else and on it goes. It's an infinite regress. And people think that that is a problem. Theists tend to think it's a problem. Aristotle thought it was a problem, which is why he thought there needed to be an unmoved mover. But there's no reason an atheist needs to think this. In fact, Bertrand Russell pointed out that there's no logical problem with a series with no first term. It's not a problem because you can actually demonstrate that there is an infinite regress in nature and it's right there in the number pi. 
you just go deeper and deeper into it and it goes on forever. And I mean a literal forever. It's transcendental in nature. And yet every one of the digits within it is absolutely real. What do you mean by real? They are no more real than any other fiction. No matter how deep you go or how much time you invest in it. And by time, I'm not talking about a human life. I'm talking about trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of years, right? It's something that we can't even imagine. Time will just keep rolling out those digits of pi. They come from somewhere. They come from the infinite, from the unbound. They come from that higher power that is above everything that is tangible here. If by here you mean physical reality, then there is no need for any transcendent higher power. Physical reality lasts as long as time does, and if time is infinite, then even some infinite things can be instantiated in physical reality. In this, so it's like everything you can see and touch is like a subset of the infinite, a subset of the unbound. Are you just defining here as everything we can see and touch and higher power as anything beyond that? If that's the case, I don't know of any physicist who denies the existence of a higher power. By this definition, a higher power is anything in any part of the universe we'll never be able to observe. I've never heard any physicist say that we'll definitely be able to eventually map the entire universe. And to me, that's wondrous because I recognize that this higher power is not something I ever get to understand, yet I have an implicit trust in its reality. The kind of atheism, if you can call it atheism, that I subscribe to is one that feels a deep, intimate connection to a profound mystery at the heart of everything. And I wonder how many atheists feel that. Because I have a feeling that it's more, it's more of a kind of a dead view of reality than, than one that is hopeful and vibrant and... What's hopeful and vibrant about believing in a mystery at the heart of everything? What hope does that give you? Hope for what? Pi proves that there is a higher order to reality. It is an order that you cannot understand. What's not to understand? What do you not understand about Pi? But it is an order that you are absolutely able to trust. Trust in what sense? Trust it to do what? That this game we're all engaged in down here isn't without some kind of ultimate reason, but you can't get your hands on that really. But it's there. Doesn't mean there's an afterlife, doesn't mean any of that stuff. It just means that everything is working the way it's supposed to. Supposed by whom? Who do you think is doing the supposing? And it's not an accident. It wasn't the case that there were millions and millions of universes and you happen to exist in the one that worked. There is something much deeper in play. And that's why I prefer the term pantheism over atheism. Pan means all, theos means God. It's just the idea that God is everything. God is not a character. This is all divine. This is all a subset of the divine, and we don't know what the divine is. If you don't know what the divine is, then what are you even saying when you say that the observable universe is a subset of it? I don't know if you've heard, but I do have a Patreon.